Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's Eileen DeFriest. It's so nice to be back. It's been a while, but I'm back. And I've got a great, great story time for you today. It's not so much a story as a kind of expression for how I feel about someone. Today I'm going to talk about my mother-in-law, who is younger than me. Now, before I'm, I did this video, when I conceived of the video, I did a search online and there isn't much when you key in my mother-in-law is younger than me. That's because most mother-in-laws and father-in-laws aren't. Those of you who follow me and Julia, you know that we're in an age gap relationship. Actually, I'm going to correct that. You know we're in a relationship and our relationship happens to be an age gap relationship. And many of you probably know because Julia and I have talked about it uh, quite a bit. And that is that we feel that our love is just love. We don't feel that neither of us is in it because the person is either older or younger. In this relationship, it just has clicked and worked from the moment we met. And as many of you know, we're married. So I've got a mother-in-law and my mother-in-law is about, I think, seven or eight years younger than me. And it's fascinating. It's utterly fascinating. The first thing I want to say about it is I am very lucky. I'm so lucky because Julia, my wife, I'm so lucky to have a person in my life, a wife like Julia, and I'm so lucky that she has a mother who is quite like herself. And by that I mean full of love, full of non-judgment, full of acceptance. I really have rarely ever met, in fact I can't think of anyone, who's less judgmental than Julia. And now that I've met her mother, and I know her mother quite well, I feel that they're made of the same material. They're both beautifully non-judgmental people. They're beautifully kind. You know, it's funny. I, for most of my life, I've been considered a kind person. You know, I, it wasn't until I got on social media, political social media, on, t on Twitter, that I kind of showed a part of myself that can get angry and leave public comments that are very frustrated with situations or people. Um, but I'm not normally like that. I might have feelings of frustration about things, but I never have made that part of myself really public. One doesn't. But in the age of social media, you know, you, you end up showing parts of yourself in a public forum that maybe you never have shown before. Certainly not on any other kind of forum except in friendship or in family. Anyway, so I can think I can say with a fairly, you know, a fairly good heart in mind that I am a pretty decent person. But I never knew decent till I met Julia. I never knew nice and really wonderful till I met Julia. I've never met the kind of nice and kind and accepting and generous as I have in meeting Julia. And then I met her mother, so I met a kind of adjacent member of that tribe of kindness and, and warmth and lovingness. So I am someone who is, who is quite a bit older than my wife. I'm 37 years older than my wife. My wife is 25. I'm 62. And Julia's mother, I think, is 54 or 55. So if she's 54, I'm eight years older. And if she's 55, obviously, I'm seven years older. But the funny thing is, what's really funny about our dynamic, you know, we've only been in the same uh, part of the planet twice. And that was when we went to Brazil for a month, about a year and a few months ago. Uh, we spent Christmas and New Year's in Brazil. Oh, it was fabulous. So I met Julia's whole family then, and it was really a, a fabulous month. And I can say I really missed them all. I really enjoyed them. I felt immediately at home with them. And Julia and I had just a marvelous month in Brazil. Now, the only other time I've seen her was six months after our trip, and that was for our wedding. And that was almost a year ago. So June 8th, 2020, we'll have been married for one year. Julia's mom and her aunt and her best friend from Brazil came over for our wedding. So they stayed with us for the two weeks leading up to our wedding. But in any event, we had them with us for two weeks, a very intense two weeks. Now you might think, why would you have guests, you know, two weeks before your wedding? Well, it was the best solution to, we had a lot of things to get done yet, 
but it somehow was a wonderful mixture. They're coming to stay with us in our small one bedroom flat, by the way. It was just so much fun. And it was not only fun, but it was a very practical solution to some of the things we needed to get done. Julie and I were busy for months, like months. And they came, Julia managed to spend a lot of time with them, taking them touring and things like that. But they also got some practical things done too, while I was very busy getting a bunch of stuff done. But we all got to spend a lot of time together, obviously living in close quarters for two weeks with one bathroom. You know, we're talking five women with one bathroom and one, one crazy kitten. So it was really lovely. So I've had two occasions to spend time with Julia's mom. When Julia and I went to Brazil, um, we stayed with her. Julie's mom lives in Sao Paulo in a, I guess you would say a three-bedroom flat, a three-bedroom apartment in Sao Paulo, a nice high-rise apartment, uh, plenty of room. And she lives there with, uh, with Valenche, their doggy. It was a doggy that Julia had rescued, I think a bit over 10, 12 years ago. So when I first met Julie's mom, you know, in the same space was when we flew to Brazil. And at that point, um, Barcroft TV was doing a video of us on our journey as a couple and as a couple who was, you know, um, an age gap couple, a unique couple. And Barcroft had a crew in Brazil who was going to meet us at the airport in Sao Paulo with Julia's mom was going to be there as well. So our meeting, you know, is filmed for posterity and it's available on Julia's channel and in, on Barcroft TV. And that was an amazing moment. I remember walking down the stairs with Julia and seeing her mom. Now, of course, I'd seen a bunch of pictures of Julia's mom, so I knew what she looked like. And she was there with her boyfriend, Joan. In any event, it was a tiny bit awkward because it was being filmed and we were both aware of that, or all of us were aware of it. But it was very sincere and warm and, and just lovely, really. So what you see on film is, is what it was. But before that, before we actually physically met in Brazil, I did speak with Julia's mom. Now she speaks Portuguese. I don't speak Portuguese. She speaks some English and I speak virtually no port. Well, I don't speak Portuguese. I know a couple words and that's it. So, but I had this feeling like as I was getting to know Julia, I, I was so curious, like, who is this person? Who is this woman who, as a single mother, raised this incredibly good person? You know, I mean, I was falling just madly in love with Julia. I mean, I already had, but I was falling deeper and deeper, you know, as the days, and I still do, you know, I fall deeper and deeper in love with her because there's so many facets to her. Um, anyway, so in the early days when I was getting to know Julia and getting to, you know, spend a lot more time together and everything, I could see that her mother was a part of her life in an everyday sense. They speak almost every day. They communicate at some point every day. And I wanted to, I found myself wanting to convey to her mother, to Julia's mother, that I wanted to thank her for bearing such an incredibly good person and for giving her, you know, I don't want to come across as weird by thanking her, but I do want to say to her, you know, thank you for, for allowing Julia to grow up in such a free way so that she was able to become so creative in such a, an enormously confident and unique sense of herself. One time, a few months after we met, before we went to Brazil, I remember saying to Julia, I just want to talk to your mother, will you translate? So I got on the phone and, you know, she was really sweet and, you know, we just basically said hi. And I then said in English, listen, I just want to thank you. You have raised an incredibly beautiful human being. And I know as a single mother, it must have been very hard. I know you worked, you know, full time and everything. And I just want to congratulate you on doing such a superlative job in helping Julia, Julia to become such a, an exquisitely good person. Not just good person, but talented, bright, an incredibly generous, empathetic person. I mean, you know, you guys know Julia. You've seen her videos. Those of you who are open to Julia and, you know, feel warmly towards her, you'll know what I'm describing when I say that she's, she's just different. And, and I think it, really touched me very deeply in the very beginning to understand that Julia's mom had a part in helping to create this person who is so creative. So back to square one in this story, and that is that I'm older than Julia's mother, I'm quite a bit older than her, and I'm quite a bit older than Julia. 
but it all works. Julia's mom and I get on really, really well. She's just like Julia. She's warm, accepting. I have never for a minute ever felt that her mother judged me. The only way she judged me was by virtue of whether her daughter was happy. And, and she even said that at our wedding that, you know, she knew it was okay because Julia was happy. She knew that, that this challenge of such a broad age difference was something that was just a fact of our relationship. It wasn't the defining element. And while Julia's mom never conveyed to me any concerns, we have talked about it, you know, that I have let her know that I will do everything I can with the remainder of my life to, well, of course, be good to Julia, but also one of the cornerstone responsibilities of the older person is to really think about the consequences of being about the reality of these two different life experiences. That needn't necessarily detract from the relationship, but it does require a lot of thought. It's interesting being uh, an older woman with a younger woman and to be a heavy woman, you know, an obese woman with a very pretty, conventionally beautiful woman. And, you know, there's a lot of areas where, where unkind people can say unkind things, and they do. But as I said, most people are, are just full of love and beautiful, and we love you guys. You know, we, we tell you this, I hope, often enough that we really, really love you and appreciate you. And it's a delight to discover that there are people out there that share this kind of warmth with us, you know, that they too have had similar experiences or that they've gotten something from something we've talked about in a video. Now, there have been a couple times, though, where it's been a little awkward because we both really love Julia. And, you know, I could feel her mother being, I don't want to use the word jealous because it's not really jealousy. She's been, I think, challenged by how involved her daughter is with someone else. And it's not a selfish reaction on her part. It's a kind of jealousy but it's not an undercurrent. There are just a couple of circumstances where it's happened, and I'll tell you what they were. When we were um, in Brazil for the month, I remember we, um, Julia and I and her mom were driving out a few hours into the country, like two and a half hours from Sao Paulo, the city where her mom lives. And we were going to her aunt's for Christmas. We were going to stay, I think, three nights, if I remember correctly. And um, we were pulling up to their house in the country in this beautiful area. It was really lovely. And we pulled up to their lovely house, and there's a gate in front of the, a locked gate in front of, you know, the driveway. And Julia had to get out and go ring a bell or something to get them to open it. So she got out of the car, and I said out loud, I said, I just love her so much. And Julia's mom said, so do I. And I just, like, you know, she didn't mean anything by it except that she felt she really loves her too. And I felt, you know, that kind of, oh, it's hard to describe. It's not a competitive sense, but I felt like I love her so much. You know, she is my partner. Um, we were unmarried at that time. And Julia's mom was saying, she's my daughter and I love her so much. So we were, we were, I guess, declaring our love for Julia. And she was telling me that she loves her deeply too. And, you know, I remember I kind of felt like I should sort of watch myself that my love for Julia doesn't supersede anybody else's, you know? And I thought though her mom probably had no, no inkling that she was, you know, she wasn't challenging me or anything. She was just simply stating the truth. But I remember being sort of a little freaked out because I felt like, Maybe I said the wrong thing or I shouldn't have said that. But then I thought about it later and I thought, no, it's just her mom being honest, you know, and like, I love her too. And, you know, and she says, so do I, you know. So, um, and Julia has told me that her mom <laughs> can be a little jealous, like not jealous in a, in a destructive or pathological way, but just when Julia's there, she wants Julia's attention and time, not to not to just fawn over her, but they love to do things together. And, you know, Julia and her mother had each other for 18 years, and then Julia moved to London, and now she has, you know, a wife, and at that point, a partner. 
And so I understand there's some, there's some adjustment that needs to happen. And, you know, and that happened. And as it turns out, it turned out really well. You know, we have a lovely relationship, Julia's mom and I. We, do, we're, we, we aren't close in the everyday sense. Like I said, we don't speak the same language. But we have, a, a, I think, a deeply successful relationship. She, I feel, trusts that my love is constructive and deep for Julia, that I am mature enough to know, you know, to to be the to be an adult about it, you know, and um, to be my age about it, you know. So there was only one other situation that I've experienced uh, with Julia's mom, and that was um, when we were staying there for three weeks out of four when Julia and I went uh, to Brazil, and uh, the other week we were up in Rio, which was really fabulous. And uh, you, there's videos on all this on, on Julia's channel. So we were going away, and her mom wasn't very happy about it, um, I'm sure, because she didn't want her, you know, to, to run off and be away for a week, that if she's in Brazil, which is very rare, it's just once a year at the most, that why did she feel she had to go away? There's plenty of time to go away. But Julia wanted to show me Rio, and we wanted some time together. So it was reasonable for us to... for us to take a week and go away. Now, before we did that, we were with Julia's mom in a, we went to this, um, see, it's Christmas time in Brazil in December, but it's tropical. <laughs> so it's really, really hot. Like you'll, they'll have Christmas events and things like that, Christmas trees, but it's summertime. It's the height of summer, like 35 Celsius, really hot. 30, 30 degrees Celsius, very, very hot weather. So we went to this beautiful park in the middle of Sao Paulo, and they had this Christmas event. So we were in uh, this gorgeous park, I forget the name of it, and uh, we were with Julia's mom, her boyfriend, Joom, uh, me, Julia, and their dog, Valenche. Beautiful little sweet doggy. Um, and uh, I was wearing shoes. I forget what I was wearing, but I was wearing shoes that were giving me blisters. And I had a lot of trouble walking. So Julia's mom was very annoyed about that. So she was impatient that we were taking so long to, to catch up to them. You know, while we walked through this park, there were tons of people around because there was a Christmas event. There was this event on the water in the middle of Sao Paulo in this park. And it was a Christmas show. So it was an outside event and, and we had gotten there early and everything and there were not enough bathrooms. It was like one of those, you know, those things that were kind of fraught, but also really fun at the same time. So when, on, our, on our way to the, to the venue where we saw this Christmas show, we, um, I ended up, you know, my, sh my feet were really hurting. So we started dragging behind a little bit. And Julia's mother was annoyed because the dog was, you know, wanting to, to walk with Julia instead of them. And it was, it was just annoying, I think. So she, I couldn't help but feel she, Julia was like, oh my God, she's being so mean to you. She wasn't really, it was just, you know, when people are together and sometimes somebody gets annoyed about something. Um, so, you know, it was something that Julia and I still laugh about to this day. And um, I've never talked about it with, with her mother. Ingrid, if you're watching, don't worry, it wasn't a big deal. And I'm sorry if I, if I dragged you guys, um, you know, if I slowed our progress through the park um, in any annoying way. And then at the very end of the event, Julie and I had to go to the bathroom really bad because we had had a couple of beers. And, you know, sitting outside and having a bit of beer in the summer, it's like there better be a bathroom. Outside of the park, there wasn't much distance between where we were in the venue and the main road. There were there were some trees. So we went by the trees and we had to go to the bathroom outside because we had to go so bad. And, there, and the bathrooms were either closed or the lines were around the block. So we got our beach towels and we held them up for each other and went to the bathroom. So we all were laughing a lot about that. And her mom was laughing very good naturedly. One other thing I'll say, and this is kind of an anecdote that I've realized that when Julia and I are together, and whether with her family or or just Julia's mom and Julia and I and the times we have been, um, I often feel younger than her mother. And that's nothing to do with her mother, but rather I sometimes feel like 
she's more mature because she's the mother. Do you know what I mean? And um, she's raised a, a kid. So I hope you understand what I'm saying, that it's like just sometimes I think that she's more mature than me because of the role she's played vis-a-vis -vis Julia, you know. But then that goes to also my relationship with Julia, that sometimes it's almost as though I'm younger, I'm the younger one, and she's the older, mature one. And, and we both laugh about that, how there are certain ways that I can be that are kind of immature, not in a bad way, you know, one hopes. But the things that I'm referring to are, you know, Julie and I know, know what I'm talking about, and you guys could probably imagine. I'm just sort of silly sometimes and kind of goofy. And I hope this was interesting to listen to um, my perspective on Julia's uh, mother, Ingrid. I ca Julia calls her Mummis, which is a kind of made-up name, I think, for like, you know, mom or mommy or something like that. And I call her that kidding around. Like, I'll be like, Mummies, when she calls or something, you know, for Julia. I feel lucky that we have this non-dramatic relationship. You know, it could be, it could be so so tense, you know, but it's not. It's never been, you know, they cried at her wedding, her aunt and her mother and a bunch of people. And, you know, they really, really are happy to see our joy and our love and know, you know, and that makes me happy. So thank you so much for listening today, for tuning in. Please um, like this video if you liked it. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I want to make a real effort to grow my channel in a way that I know it can. And I need your help in doing that. I love you guys. I really, really love you guys. I hear from so many people all the time, really, really beautiful human beings. That is a wonder to me every single time. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for bearing with me in this video that's been all a bit all over the place. Thank you for subscribing, liking the videos, and thank you so much. See you soon.